In lesson 1.5, you'll be learning two basic structures in Spanish. The first is negation, how to form a negative statement in Spanish. And the second is how to form a question, one of two ways in which you'll learn to form a question in Spanish. You'll also learn the, the responses to a question, yes or no, affirmative or negative. First of all, negation. It's really quite simple. A simple negation occurs when one puts the word no, no before the conjugated verb which is being negated. For example, if I wanted to say uh, that he doesn't do this action, I would say, él no lava los trastes, the dishes. Huh? He doesn't wash the dishes. Él no lava, notice I said lavar, lava. Él no lava los trastes. So affirmative, él lava los trastes. Negative, el no lava los trastes. Another example. If I want to indicate that you don't do this when it comes to classical music, we'll say, I would say, uh, tú no escuchas la música clásica. Tú no escuchas la música clásica. The affirmative statement would be, tú escuchas música clásica. The negation, tú no escuchas música clásica. The, the way in which to form a question, or at least the first way in which to form a question, is inversion. That is to say, taking the subject of the sentence and the verb and reversing their order, inverting them. For example, uh, if I were to want to ask you if you listen to classical music, I would say, instead of tú escuchas, tú escuchas, I would reverse the order of the subject and the verb and say, ¿Escuchas tú música clásica? Escuchas tu música clásica. Now this brings us to an important point. In Spanish, there's a way of speaking in a more concise manner than really we do in English. And that is by dropping the personal pronoun or the subject from the sentence. Now, how can we possibly do that? It would be like saying in English, listen to classical music. Listen to classical music. You would know if I was speaking to you or about him or about her or about myself because I, I, I didn't use any kind of a subject in my sentence. Well, in Spanish, provided that we understand in the context of the conversation about whom we're speaking, there is no need to, to mention the, the personal pronoun, and we have a, a certain series of, of clues that indicate who that, about whom we're speaking. Uh, for example, if I'm speaking about myself, I'm going to say, yo escucho. Now, the o at the end of escucho makes it clear that I'm speaking about myself because o corresponds to the form of the verb, the conjugation, when yo is the subject. If I say, uh, escuchas música clásica, you know that I'm saying, tú escuchas música clásica, because the s at the end of the verb corresponds to the form we hear when tú is the subject. When I say, escucha música clásica, unfortunately in that case there are three possibilities. Escucha, which is ch chopping off the ending, could be él escucha, or ella escucha, or usted escucha. And so only the context of the conversation will make it clear whether I'm talking about a male, about a female, or to you in a formal, respectful uh, manner. Okay? Now, since I can drop the, the personal pronoun, um, that means that when I form a question and I invert the subject and the verb, I can simply drop the subject entirely, and you will only hear the verb with my voice rising at the end of the, of the statement, showing that it's a question I'm asking. For example, if I want to ask you if you listen to classical music, I can say, ¿Escuchas tú música clásica? But I can simply also say, ¿Escuchas música clásica? And that, that question has exactly the same value, the same meaning as the first one that I asked. The tú is truly not necessary because escuchas tells me enough. It tells me that the subject must be tú of that, of that uh, question. This is true not only by the way of questions. This is true of any statement in Spanish as well. Let me give you another example. Let's say uh, you knew uh, that I was talking about this young man right here. For example, I might say, El se llama David. I just told you what his name is. You know about whom I'm speaking. And then I could ask you, does he live in Mexico? I could say, I would take the subject, talking about him, él, 
and the verb, this, this idea right here, chopping it, say, vive, el vive. But to make it into a question, I would reverse their or, the words of order. Vive el in Mexico. Vive el in Mexico. But the el can be dropped because you already know that I'm talking about this young man. And the ending of the verb confirms that I'm speaking about someone. I'm not speaking about myself and I'm not speaking to you. Okay, and so instead of saying vive él en México, I can simply say vive en México. Well, let me just try and summarize what I've been, what I've been telling you. If I want to uh, indicate that I, I live in uh, Detroit, for example, I could say yo vivo en Detroit. Or I could drop the yo because the o at the end of vivo already makes it clear that I'm talking about myself. And I could simply say Vivo en Detroit. Yo vivo en Detroit. Vivo en Detroit. The sentences are identical in their value. So obviously, the second of the two, vivo en Detroit, is somewhat more concise. Or I could uh, say that tú, uh, tú escuchas música rock. You listen to rock music. Tú escuchas música rock. But I could also simply drop the tú and say Escuchas música rock. And it would be obvious that I'm speaking to you because the s at the end of escuchas indicates that you are the subject of the sentence. So, tú escuchas música rock. Escuchas música rock. The two sentences are equal, equal in value, equivalent. No difference whatsoever. Now, this also applies to the question. Tú escuchas música rock. Escuchas tú. Musica rock. However, the tú not being necessary, I could ask the question simply saying, ¿Escuchas musica rock? And the question would have equivalent value. The only potential confusion occurs in the third person singular, that is to say, when I say él, ella, or usted, since all three of them share the same form of the verb. Let's say, for example, um, hacer. Haces, uh, haces la tarea. You do homework, okay? If I wanted to say, he does homework, él hace la tarea. She does homework, ella hace la tarea. You do homework, formally, respectfully, usted hace la tarea. Were I to drop él, ella, or usted in all three sentences, I would be saying, hace la tarea. So obviously, the context of the conversation, what sentences preceded that one, would have to make it clear if I were talking about, about him, about her, or to you in respectful fashion. In, in the same fashion, let's assume that we knew that we were speaking about some boy, therefore, hace la tarea, or él hace la tarea, um, informing the question, hace él la tarea, I could simply drop the L and say, hace la tarea, and provided you understood already about whom I was speaking, that would be perfectly comprehensible and perfectly acceptable. Okay, well, without, within the ULAT, more often than not, you will hear me say the personal pronoun. I will not drop it, except more commonly in questions. Normally, I will not drop it because I want you to associate the sound of the personal pronoun with that verb conjugation, that verb form that you're learning. But occasionally, you may hear it dropped and know that it's perfectly fine to do so. Well, I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, uh, I trust that Lesson 1.5 and the exercises that you're about to perform will make uh, uh, more, even more sense than my explanation. So at this point, you are free to go to Lesson 1.5 and to perform its activities, and I'll see you in the next class. Goodbye.